All right, guys. Hey, thanks for joining me. So to continue the fertility conversation, there's going to be many videos because it's just such a large conversation to have. So our journey through soil health is, has we, have we been able to pull back on uh, commercial inputs and overall expense on the farm <clears throat> and very much so because like last video we talked about the nutrient management part that that nutrient management side is kind of what led us into soil health it wasn't soil health leading us to nutrient management it was let's do strip till to save all those mechanical passes and do a better job with our fertility and then also like hey wait a minute looks what's happened into our soil uh, we were struggling with no-till for just a short burst there and then strip-till helped us make that transition from conventional till to no-till and then at the same time we were bringing in cover crops and uh, and everything was going there and so the, the strip-till, we didn't find soil health, soil health kind of found us. Eh, whatever you think of that, but um, so it was kind of weird. Um, and so absolutely the soil health has saved us a pile of money because the strip like we talked about, PK and sulfur cut in half. Um, and then the time across the field, the, the parts there, you know, um, our, our labor and mechanical investment in every acre is way down. Timeliness across the farm is so much more uh, consistent and nice. We can get out to the field better in the spring. We can get out to the field in this in season behind a big rain. If you needed to get out there, you know, if you're planning like, hey, you know, next Wednesday I want to get out there and, and do something in the beans, whether it's a herbicide, fungicide, whatever you needed to do, or side dress corn, and all of a sudden you get this week of just bad weather. Uh, behind that bad weather, we can get out there way sooner than we could have before. Uh, when we were doing full tillage and so seeing that them physical property improvements on my farm we fixed our water problem on the farm without adding tile because uh, that's originally where we we're going to go it's like we're just going to start tiling around here and uh, just put a bunch of surface drains and catch that excess water to get rid of it because that's what we were told uh, by all these corn college tvs and and all, all this other mainstream farming media was that that's just what you have to do and so not only did we solve the water issue by not having to add tile in that expense, is that now that excess water is in our profile uh, and not just running off. Um, so there's a whole lot of other benefits to that. And so the soil health side, um, we should get into things I no longer care about video. Um, the planter just runs a little nicer across the land. I mean, it's just there's just so many positives that have came with it. Um, but, but we've experienced on the fertility side, there's a lot of conversation on soil health, on fertilizer, on can we get rid of commercial inputs. And, and most definitely we can. Um, to finish my topic on the, the point of the farm, on paper I haven't seen, I've seen all these physical attributes and all these positive things going on. On soil tests, there's nothing there saying, yes, you absolutely need to go to soil health because look, look at the paper right now. Uh, I could really care less what the soil tests are saying at this point. Um, we do have the five-year study and the 10-year field that we'll be monitoring both of them to watch how soil tests change over the years. And, uh, and so we can see that. Um, but on, on, on replacing commercial inputs, we've all experienced soil health practices on reducing commercial inputs. We've all gone into an alfalfa field with corn and needed none to very little uh, purchased nitrogen to make a successful corn crop. Um, we've, we've all taken over a pasture, whether it's our own pasture or, or new land that hasn't seen commercial fertilizer in 20 years. Uh, cattle have been out there grazing on it and uh, you pull a soil sample and it, the bray is at 50 and the K is at 300, but it's never had a dollar of commercial input to it. Uh, that's, that's soil health right there. You guys didn't even know it was that easy, did you? And, uh, and so that's, that's a big key around here because if we take over some other old sod, maybe some old sod is only a bray of nine and a K of 45. It'll, you'll go broke trying to make that look pretty on a paper 
on a soil analysis test, but we can put cattle on there someday when I have a large herd, I can just put them on a field and just in a year or two, just, just pound the manure into that field and really just rebuild that fertility and then get it back into production and then back to cattle and back to production as needed, you know. The cows are my VRT, they're my variable rate fertilizers. So where we would like to get to on the farm is that corn only goes into a field that has nitrogen there for it, either because it was a legume or it was a uh, green fallow. So green fallow to where uh, we seeded it down, it had the year off and the cover crop just got to do whatever it wanted to do. We produced a lot of nitrogen. Uh, we had crops in there to cycle P and K and sulfur and calcium and build roots and soil structure and life and mineralization and, and all that jazz. And then we come in with corn the next year with very little purchased inputs um, or behind cows. Uh, plain and simple, the, the pasture and the cows are out there building uh, the soil up and then we can come in with corn again, very little inputs and there we go with corn. Um, and then the cows with our VRT with the cows is instead of just moving them linear through paddocks across the field, we can just say, okay, in this field, here's the zone that really needs the most help. So that's where you intense, uh, put more intensity with the cows uh, in that spot and, and let them do as much as they can. And then uh, um, you move them around and bring them back to that spot kind of deal. Um, in the winter time when they're out on pasture, maybe them bad spots are the ones that you do all the bale grazing and let all that bale material uh, work its way back into the ground as well. Um, so the cows are just a handy tool there, but It'd be nice to have them as another rotating tool around the farm where we can just simply uh, haul them out to a field uh, behind the combine in the fall. You, you Maybe you said you're, uh, we did small grains. If we know, okay, Bob's field is the next lowest fertility field we have. Instead of spending a bunch of money at the commercial retail store, we can say, oh, we can produce meat off of that land very well. So we seed it to pasture and the cows are there for a year or two and then, then they move to the next field kind of deal. Uh, it's, it's a beautiful thing if a guy can get the system going. Um, a lot of people kind of forget the fact that when they say, I wanna be in a soil house so I'm just gonna not use any commercial fertilizer because I heard this presenter you know, say that he hasn't used commercial fertilizer in 10 years, why would he look at his soil tests <clears throat> they forget the fact that that presenter also said that he invested 10, 15, 25 years into setting that up. And, and so some people, you get a little selective hearing um, and it all depends on, on, on how deep you're gonna dive into this and, and the soils and climate and, and it's very specific to your farm as to how this stuff all reacts to your farm. Um, but that, that's kind of just it in a nutshell of what we're seeing from soil health and how we're reducing costs and, and where we're hoping to go with farm management to keep, keep reducing that commercial input cost because I keep saying it, sooner or later, prices are gonna get very high and then regulations are gonna make it very difficult to keep applying commercial product and so uh, I'm just trying to figure it out now to stay ahead of the game. And uh, so guys, I don't know, I'm gonna leave it right there. We've got a bunch more conversation after this one. So uh, stay tuned and we'll see you next time.